to Gamma 2017. I am here with the wonderful Stephen Bonacore from Stronghold Games. How are you doing? I am so good. So good, I'm good to so see happy. you here. It's awesome. And array of games here to talk about. OMG. 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 You got ridiculous I'm amount. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. So I mean, this is like basically our second quarter releases, and we've got like nine items you can see here, plus another one that I can mention as well. Ten different things that we can talk about. We have obviously not show the games the way a lot of people are doing because we've got too many things. Um, but as you'll see, one thing that Stronghold Games is, has been trying to be um, over time is to be that place that any gamer can come to say, well, what is Stronghold doing in the heavy Euro space or in the light card game space or whatever they like in games, that's sort of what I'm trying to attempt to be. They right. will be able to have a stop at looking at our catalog. So with that in mind, and I don't know if you guys, what you guys can see, let's start with the tiniest, tiniest little one. It happens to be the first release in, in order. Look at that. Really, really tiny box. So this is Get the Cheese. Get the Cheese. It's a game, as it says in the back, of cat and mouse and dog. Oh. Basically, you're, you're a family of mice, and you're running around trying to get the cheese in card play while you're playing cats against other people's mice and dogs against their cats and stuff like that. So you're one-upping up, each other in doing so. A light card game, um, but with a lot of little strategy. You can play this game. It says eight to adult on the box, but six-year-olds can play the game, but they won't get all the subtleties of the strategy. Right. But it's cute enough that this is a nice family weight game. And if you notice the size of the box, I didn't bring the comparative, but it's the okay. same exact as Fuji Flush, which I came out um, last year and did very well for us. Uh, so we're, this is. We're basically starting a line of these style games, right. with uh, Fuji Flush being first okay. and Get the Cheese second, and more to come in the future. That's exciting! I like the size. Nice yeah. for travel. Nice travel, quick size. So what are we gonna go with next? So much selection. All right. <laughs> So this one, Pit Crew. Pit, oh, that's right. I said, oh, yes. I, should have done. <laughs> I know, right, right. on the other First, screen. Pit Crew. Yes. Pit Crew. <laughs> the first thing people looking overhead can see that is a Jeff Engelstein game. So Jeff is, we've worked closely with him on a lot of things. And yep. basically, that's in the Dragon and Flag in last year. Phenomenal game. Did very well for us. Um, Pit Crew, this game came out of a challenge that Suze Sheldon put out. Really? And she said on the internet, I don't think it was directly to Jeff, but she said, you know what? There's a lot of games about racers, you know, the, right. the drivers of games, but there's no games about the pit crew, and they're like the most important thing out there because see, they got to get that car back in like six seconds or else they're losing time. Jeff said, challenge accepted, and he created this game about nine months later. It's, it's going to be on the market. Oh my goodness. So in pit crew, you play the, the pit crew of uh, like a stock car racing uh -huh. team, NASCAR racing team. And you are in speed play, trying to change the tires, all yep. four tires, uh, refuel the car, and uh, tune up the engine. And the first person to do that then starts moving around the track. And by rolling dice, they can move a certain distance. You can either go for as fast as possible to get the car back on the track, or and, and therefore make some mistakes, right. or you're going to do it perfectly with no mistakes, because you'll get penalties later on when you figure it out. The game is a team game from one to three teams of two to three players. So okay. it's two to nine player game, which right. is kind of cool. Speed game, pit crew, Jeff Engelstein, really looking forward to that, about its subject that Sue Sheldon. There you go, Sue. There you she watch. goes. I'll put that down there. And on the topic of speed games, okay. Dungeon Rush. Ooh. Now, Dungeon Rush is a co new cooperation that we have with Lauda Pellet. Yes. Fi, the Finnish company. Uh, they were looking for a nice, strong partner, and they selected us to do a couple of games with them this year. We'll talk about another one soon. Mm -hmm. Dungeon Rush is also a speed game where you are a, an adventurer with several others, but you're not cooperating. You're going in there, and we'll be slaying monsters. You have two adventurers. Each person has two adventurers, one represented by their right hand. Okay right hand, and one represented by their left <laughs> I'm hand. Like, I'm confused. <laughs> so you have them on the table, and they, each one of them has different abilities. And I can quickly show you. Yeah. Big, big oversized cards for these. Okay. Oh. And each one has like different abilities. This particular one is good at arranged and, um, and uh, magic. And this, the thief, obviously, is really good at stealth, etc. And you have us whole, and by the way, male on one side, female on the other side, exactly I the same that. character, which yeah. is kind of cool with different, different art, which is neat. Yeah. And you're going to be going into the dungeon uh, and everyone's going to take a couple cards, flip them over simultaneously, mm -hmm. and then try to defeat them with your hands. How do you do that? Well, if this guy in this hand was good at um, um, stealth, I could go like this, 
and I would probably defeat him because I need stealth to defeat him. Right. This one can be defeated by anybody. He's just he just gets gold, so anybody could hit him. If a big person came out and you needed to to need more than than you had with just one guy, you could you can do this. Yeah. So you're doing that. You're grabbing the the um, the uh, the loot and the. Uh, and the, the weapons that you're going to be getting, yep. and then you can level up your characters basically by doing this. So you can see now oh, this yeah. guy would now have level two weapon. swords mm -hmm. versus one. So that is Dungeon Rush. And, and how this long does is, that take to play? This is a we call it a 12 minute game. You oh. play 12 rounds, wow. each one's a minute. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Speed it. game. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Uh, let's go. Not alone next. Oh, okay. I'll be right. Not alone um, was one of the big releases out of Essen. It was on the top 10 on the Geek uh, Buzz list. Mm -hmm. And we picked this up with Geek Attitude Games. This is a one versus many game. Okay. Two to seven players. You are, you are a, um, uh, a ship that has crash landed on this planet far away. And all of a sudden you start exploring, but you realize you are not alone. And there's this creature, this entity, this presence mm -hmm. on the planet that is trying to assimilate you, steal your will. And uh, so your objective is to wait it out and hold out for the rescue ship to show up. And of course, the creature is trying to absorb you into the planet itself, so you become part of, of it. Uh, and it's basically, it's a race sort of to get to the point where one, one team wins or the other. So one against many, two versus seven players. The solicitations from distributors are already so high in this game that I committed to a print run larger than the first print run on the game, and the game is not even out yet until oh May. Goodness. So this is going to be sort of our next big game. Not quite of the terraforming Mars insanity, yeah, but this is going to be a, another very big game for us. And something very different, because you don't see a lot of those, you know, first of all, up to seven players and those one versus many style no, games. it's true. It's very different. And I've actually been hearing about this one. Yeah. So looking forward to this one myself. Very good. Thank you. All right. What's next? Let's, let's move to... Some other game release stuff. So we mentioned Lautapellet.fi. Yes. Here's another one and this with them. Quite popular. This was also very, very popular during during Essen. This is Flam Flam Rouge. Flam Rouge. Flam Rouge. Correct. Means a uh, red flag, which is what they wave during the last part of a bike race. In this game, you are playing bike racers. Each player has two racers, yep. one called the roller and one called the sprinter. The roller is the guy who's got lots of stamina and he's gonna kinda set the pace and your sprinter's kinda hopefully stay behind and make that break out toward the end. Um, you uh, can play multiple tracks. Yep. Actually had it the wrong way, right? But yeah, all right, whatever. You know, you set up a, a custom track for each different game because there's yes, because there's all of these different <laughs> pieces, uh, these different track pieces, and it comes with several, various sets setups for the game, and you're doing this all via card play. It's sort of a deck deconstruction mm -hmm. game. Each each one of your racers comes with a separate deck of cards. Uh, you'll draw four cards in your hand. You'll play one face down. You'll, everyone will uh, show that card, and then you'll move the racers based on how fast you want it to go for the given turn. Do you want to try to break out early? You want to stay in the middle of the pack? You want to come from behind? And there's all these little subtle strategies. As a racing game, I found this thing so compelling. Those people who have played like Ave Caesar yep. and games like that, which I love, um, this is that kind of game, and it really, it really shines when you're, when you're playing that str strategically with like four, four players in big packs together. Really, I this really, was really, and really thematic. I'm actually a biker, so I actually oh. looked at it and I said, "Wow, this is really good." I mean, it really, yeah. it really feels like. I mean, whether you're a biker or not, I agree. Absolutely. It, yeah, yeah, it really feels like you're, you're, you know, strategically trying to put yourself at the right place to at that right point where, like, okay, now I'm gonna start playing those big cards that hopefully I had saved into my like sprinter's deck to like get that's him right. moving because he can really in the end he can really you know win that race for you. Yes. So that's Very nice. Flamme Rouge without cooperation that's great, by with. The way. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's horrible. Come on. <laughs> with Lauter Pellet. <laughs> We're kind of going up the chain of yeah. complexity on some level, okay. but we're going to no, save good. we're going to save one of the really light ones for last. Okay. All right. Feel. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's force of habit. Can I just put it this yeah, way, maybe? Yeah. Yes, yeah, force of habit. I have to. <laughs> Fields of Green. Now, Fields of Green, um, Artipia came out with a very short, small print run around Essen time last year. Um, uh, got theirs out, and now we're doing, because we have a strategic partnership with them, right. we're doing the game. In Fields of Green, we're using the engine of Among the Stars, mm -hmm. uh, where... <laughs> 
Well, I am dumb. I am <laughs> no, bad just, at this. Just, it's okay. Let me guide you. You go. You, just, you go. You just keep moving the game <laughs> <You> around. <go. laughs> We're using the engine of Among the Stars, where it's uh, card drafting, like all the Seven Wonders as well. You, and you take a card and you place it, and you make it part of your field in front of you. Right. So the um, the adjacency or how close or far away the cards are to each other are going to matter. Uh, it. Unlike Among the Stars, it adds more currencies. So you uh -huh. now you have um, you have several. You have an extra currency. Wa you have water and wheat here, plus the the credits. I forgot what you call them. And also the drafting mechanism here. Um, when everyone decides um, when we do another round of drafting, they get to select which cards from the various types of cards will be coming up during that round. So there's a, you if you say you need um, a lot of the um, and I forgot the names and I apologize and all of the purple cards mm -hmm. that you know you really want to get them you might not you might draw more of those and get shuffled up but you might not you might not draw them into your hand and, and the other guy might hate draft you I love that term hate draft, draft you take away those cards <laughs> because he knows you have them and he wants them so um, drafting game a little more it, take, it takes the Among the Stars engine same designer okay. and takes it brings it to the next level with a maybe more approachable theme everyone loves farming you know gamers really love farming and this is a modern farming 20th century 21st century modern American farming oh, I see the gameplay is only uh, 45 minutes 45 minutes two to four players Lots 45 game minutes in a short amount of time yeah yeah this looks really good fields my list. of green did I get it right yeah you did got it right <laughs> you always get it right that way <laughs> two more right okay no yes. you're doing great <gasps> doing good on time yeah you're doing great thank you <laughs> okay so cottage garden you might, by the way, a lot of the games I'm showing you don't have the Stronghold logo yet because these are the I original, the original printings. Uh, but obviously, they will once we come out. This says Ein Uwe Rosenberg Spiel. I'm yeah, impressed. How's, how's that uh -huh. one? A Uwe Rosenberg game, Cottage Garden. So. Of course, Uwe Rosenberg, one of the premier designers, we immediately, when we went out and we got the game, we immediately put it into the Great Designer series, number eight in the series. Oh, fantastic. And Cottage Garden is a riff on his game that he came out with, which was only a two-player game called Patchwork. I believe that came out last year, right? Oh, that game. Yeah. And you are, um, and I don't remember exactly how, um, even the theme was. Were you building like a quilt or something? Like that? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, quilt. Exactly. Here, you are building a garden. So you've got, oh, okay. No, keep going, keep going. I, can't, I cannot do this right. <laughs> so here, you are putting them down into your own. You end up with, you have two fields in front of you, mm -hmm. blank fields you kind of start out with. And you're going to the, the market to grab these Tetris-like tiles that are very pretty flowers and different right. other things for your garden. And you're trying to complete your garden. Once you do, you're going to put it to the side and score it later on. There's even there's even things just like potted, you know, pots to add into your garden and cats. cats. There are plenty of cats in this game. So two games I have coming out with cats, which is my love of animals. Exactly. I love animals. People Bonacore love loves animals. No. <laughs> Percy's probably watching this right now. My cat. So um, two to four players now instead of just a two-player game. Um, very approachable game. You know, not not that horrible, uh, harder thinkiness that you get in some, you know, some of these bigger Euros. But this is a nice, lightweight Euro um, that can play in 60 minutes. Yeah. Uh, eight plus. One to four players. You can even play it solo solo variant in the game. Which is, a lot of people have been asking for those lately. So and I've, yeah, yeah. I've, a number of my games have come out recently with solo play, which is not something that I do, but right. but nice responding to, to the market is, is good, because yes. you know there are a lot of gamers that end up getting lots of games in their collection and don't have the time to possibly get it to the table you know, with their friends, so right. they can learn it themselves and things like that. Exactly. I did it right. Ghost Catchers. Now, this um, um, this is the lightest of everything I've just shown you, okay. but I'm showing it last because this is a true departure uh, for Stronghold Games. Did we do that? We do it. Oh, we didn't do it. No, no. Yeah, you got to do a switcheroo here. Okay. Frog Riders. That's what I said. Frog Riders was the. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm on it. She's, she's much better Sharp. than me at this. Much better. <laughs> Frog Riders is a cooperation with Eggert Spiel. And this, by the way, is the first production copy. I had this flown in just for the show from Germany, so I'd have it here. Um, Frog Riders is going to be our uh, Spiel de Jar weight game for the year. This will be presented in, uh, in you know, hopefully get a nomination yeah. or a recommendation. Um, very adorable artwork, family weight, tactical game. And what you're doing here, mm -hmm. um, you are a member of a little elf tribe, and you are conducting mock combat on frogs. Of course, very, very approachable theme. What the heck does that mean? I don't know, but it's adorable. <laughs> it's absolutely adorable. These are custom um, plastic 
frog riders that you set up on the board, and a la checkers even, you jump over them and collect them. So none of these are owned, none of the frog riders are owned by you. you jump over and you collect them. Once you collect them, you can either use them to send back to the village, and therefore use, each one has a different power, like one of them enables you, once you send it back, you can do a second jump. One of them enables you to get one of the point cards. Various different things. Um, so you're gonna be doing that, uh, collecting them for points, collecting them to make sets from the goals that are out there, okay. and collect and using them to collect other cards that you can then put into your hand to make more and more. It's, it's basically a point engine that you're creating with the game. Um, very nice family weight game um, for eight plus, and we think this is going to be a big game. And we, we've been playing this at um, the game night last night here. I don't know if you guys. Um, we did. We snuck in. Yeah, I snuck in for a little bit, and I was so tired from my being on East Coast time, I had to leave quickly. Um, but Family Weight game um, has a really good reception with people who have seen it so far. And, and I that noticed is the. Yeah. I noticed uh, Asger. Did he not? Is it the same uh, gentleman who was doing Flamme Rouge? He did. That's, That's right. right. He is designed. Look, at you are. No, right? Uh, on the ball. Asger Harding. <laughs> Grand Rood. Grand Rood? Is that right? Grand Rood? I, 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 I think that's enough. accurate. <laughs> He'll be happy with my pronunciation. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. And, okay, back to Ghost Catchers. This is the last one we'll show you. And this is what I said is Departure. Okay. This is a children's game in its basic format. In fact, we have on the box ages four plus. Oh, okay. Four plus, two to four players, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, in Ghost Catchers, you are, and I'm going to show you the, the, the cute components for this yeah, game. This is, this is a do. prototype. This is, you can see on the side of the box, it actually says Gespenster am Fenster, which in German is Ghosts in the Window. Oh, but we rhymes. changed it to Ghost Catchers because okay. yeah. it doesn't rhyme in English. So it's Ghost Catchers. So uh, in the prototype here, okay. quickly show it to you. Yeah, please. You are going to be putting um, transparent cards on the board. Oh. These are transparent, mm -hmm. transparent cards oh, that'll be put out there. Depends on the number of players and, and the age of the, the children you're playing with. You'll put a certain number out, and then these will be next to it, matching the ones that are out there. And then you'll turn over the card. You know, look at you, he is out there. And then you'll go, okay, that's it, if, assuming that is it. And right. then to check it, you can actually take that oh, and put, it, and put it there and say, oh, wait, am I right? I'm wrong, actually. And of course, they're all really close and really hard. It could be another one that I yeah. didn't put no, on. No, that's good. I'm just trying to see the difference. Yeah. See? So they're all, they're all so close. Now, you can, again, you can play it with really, really, really young children, or you can add more of them to play it with older, or you can do something to play it with adults, even. This will, this will play up to adults. You can make this really hard by sort of doing this on the board. Yep. You know, putting things like this, and now try to see if you can like turn this over. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> it really makes it hard and think. Right. That one, I think I got. Which is it. great for kids. Right. So if this game, this is a game. Did I get it? You did. Oh my God, that's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> so this is a game. Like I said, you play with the youngest kids, play with your older kids, play with your friends as a party game, drinking, and you're gonna. You, it's a game that's gonna grow with the family. It'll right. be with you forever. Um, kin, this will be a Kinderspiel. This is the, the German uh, children's game, but uh, since the timing of the game was later, uh -huh. this is a later release, like a uh, June release, it didn't make it for the judging, so this is the potential for next year. Eggert Spieler and I um, decided that we're going to, they decided, and I said, I'm going to happily join you, get into this market so that then we're now in the heavy euros with them, the family weight euros with them, mm -hmm. and now the smallest, lightest games with them as well. Fantastic. And that is the, the only other thing I'll mention is, Ooh. Terraforming Mars is first expansion, which um, I don't have here to show you, that's... but this is the advertisement for it. It's a double-sided game board. Oh. That's, what, that's, that's what the expansion is. You can play on the other side of Mars or the so south polar region of Mars, and that's how that's going to work. I have a map here that we, I just printed out so that I can oh show goodness. people who are at Gamma. <gasps> I know people are, you know, and I'm bringing it on the <laughs> bringing it on the BGG cruise. Shh, I'm sorry, All Tom. All these Tom, secrets. Tom, Tom <laughs> mad if I even mention the BGG cruise. <laughs> I'm going on the Dice Tower Cruise. I promise. I promise. I'm going this year. <laughs> anyway, thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing us. I'm yeah. so excited. All these great games. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff yeah. coming out. I, I need those things. Oh, you, yeah. stole, you stole some I, of my I'm pieces. I'm stealing pieces you of the game. You want pieces? Sorry. <laughs> so that's it for now. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.